welcome back to not welcome back. This is the first time I've streamed from this area in my apartment. Okay. So we set up a little stew. It's that time of the summer. Sometimes I don't want to be in the office super duper late. So we're getting vulnerable. You are inside my home. You are inside my walls. You have impregnated me and my life as I know it. Today, we are ripping off a 12 team ripper on underdog let me put her up on the board those y'all that are getting ready for your drafts we're gonna be hanging out pretty much every night from now until the season kicks off we're gonna do these drafts as many nights as i humanely can 20 seconds per pick we're running a, a puppy on underdog right now which is as you can see settings below we've got a 12 teamer you are starting three wide receivers a flex two running backs a quarterback a tight end and then you've got 10 bench spots let's enter her let's <laughs> impregnate her i've got to stop using that term i'm sorry 49 let's go we're filled we're impregnated we've impregnated her we've impregnated the puppy Wow, that sounds even worse. Holy shit. I got to just stop. Just I got to just cut that shit all together. All right. So if you're new to underdog, this is a best ball draft. But because you have to buy in, as you can see, I'm in the puppy, which is a $5 buy in league. The grand prize is six figures. OK, so if you really come out of here, you're playing in a 12 team league, um, but you have a playoff system at the end of the year. So you're trying to score as many points as possible from weeks one to 14 among the 11 other league mates that you got in your league. And then you got to dominate weeks 15, 16, 17 to really make the money. But the best part about these drafts, in my opinion, from someone who's like, my heart is far more in the redraft game, like the season long play with your friends type leagues. Um, these leagues just help me prepare because as you're drafting, you will just really quickly see how fast – uh, you know, your your picks become like muscle memory here where it's like this guy's not supposed to be available in round six, seven, and it makes your home league drafts really fucking easy. So if you're new to underdog, this is the best best place to prepare. And I'll uh, when it's not my turn to draft, I'll I'll jump into the chat and answer as many questions as I possibly can. But, yeah, we'll be doing this as many nights as I can from now leading up to the actual NFL draft or uh, the NFL season kickoff. You know, we'll talk some ball. We'll talk about our balls. We'll do everything in between. So as a lot of you guys know, in underdog, people go super wide receiver heavy. And it can be a little bit tough if you end up going running back early here, which I'm usually fine with in home leagues. But what happens is you don't get a lot of wide receiver value uh, in the third-ish round. So you start to kind of ruin your roster a bit if you go running back early that being said though I, at the seven i think i'm okay with a mixture of Brees and Bijan. and in our draft guide, i actually have Bijan ranked above Brees hall and i do for the year but i do a lot of these underdog drafts so i start to try to go back and forth with the players that i pick but i'm fine with either Bijan or Brees at the seven eight um some things that we should probably talk about okay team vice city what the hell is that Jalen waddle at the 108 um Justin Jefferson will be getting the ball thrown to him from Sam Darnold. Do I love that? No. Darnold's probably a fraud. Uh, can he sling the ball? Yes. Can he sling the ball to the other team many times in a game? Also, yes. This defense is not great. They'll be improved, but there's not going to be uh, a ton of games, I think, where they're like going ground heavy and playing ball control. I do think, you know, based on what we saw from Mullins and, and Dobbs last year, Sam Darnold's going to have some big games, and obviously that runs through Justin Jefferson. So I'm not, I'm not really too nervous about uh, Jefferson's setup in 2024. So he's a top six pick for me. Uh, with Brees Hall, yeah, I mean, I just think that offense is going to run through Brees as much as I think Atlanta is going to run through Bijan too, man. I, I, I think both of them are primed to have years that really bring the running back position back to fantasy. Like if next year every single draft starts with Bijan Brees or Brees Bijan, would anyone really be surprised? I don't think so. I don't think so. So we're almost back up. And I do like some of the players left on the board here. Uh, Gibbs is obviously dropping a little bit because of the hamstring strain. These ones are really tough to get a grasp on, man, because, you know, it's August 15th, August 14th. So if they're like super minor hamstring strains, he could be out two weeks and then still have a week of recovery. If they're like a little bit more serious and they linger into the into the season, we're going to have some issues. 
Um, right now, oh no, that's why you got to use the fucking Q. You're an a moron, Nick. You're a fucking moron. I'm already doing this again. I'm already doing this first live stream of the damn summer, and I'm doing this. Yeah, I meant to go Nico Collins there, but we went Jameer Gibbs, and we will power through. And now we're just going to have to absolutely pepper the wide receiver position. We're about to have to go Lowry's on the wide receiver position. Whatever. I got to take Eric's name off the screen. Why are we not drafting Nico earlier? Uh, Because the, the shot clock ran out on us. That's why. Show me the board, bruh. I will at times once uh once we dip in and out. I think you guys could see that, right? There you go. Okay. So we are through two rounds for the most part. There are um uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven running backs picked, and the rest of the picks are wide receivers. Abdul, what's up, baby? Let me minimize that chat real quick. Viking signing. JJ came with having to sacrifice five people. <laughs> Can their football guys leave Minnesota alone? Yeah, I feel for the Vikings uh, faithful, man. JJ looked good coming off the week one preseason game. You guys finally felt like you probably had some hope for the future. Uh, and then he dies. And then Jordan Addison dies in practice. And then, uh, you know, you're back to being you're back to the Viking age, basically. B.B. Andrews. Tank Dell, now a uh, an early third round pick. Okay. See, this is the problem. Like Kyron's probably going to fall to me here, and I would love to draft Kyron, but I'm not going to do that with two running backs on the roster already, and I won't have to. Thank you, Hunter the King. You are not a king. You are my king. And I say, fanboy, how you darn. Don't do it to me. Fuck yeah. I actually have been kind of unnecessarily spiking DJ Moore up my rankings. Uh, I just feel like the more I've watched Caleb play and him and, and him and DJ Moore together, I think DJ can just pick back right up where he left last year, statistically speaking. Keenan, Keenan weighing in at 230. Anyone see those reports? That can't be real. I actually haven't watched Hard Knocks this summer. Uh, my HBO Max... I was on my friend's HBO Max subscription for a while, and then uh, I'm no longer on it. So I'm not sure if that means like a breakup in our friendship, but I don't have access to his um, HBO Max. Therefore, I cannot watch Hard Knock. So I haven't seen what he looks like there. But for some, like, why would you drop that report of him weighing 230 pounds? Like, that can't be real, right? Right? Uh, and then you have Rome, who's a rookie, and right now he's only playing a three wide receiver set, so it just feels like it's DJ Moore City. Also, this Roundtable Sports Podcast, I've never seen a name that long on Underdog. I didn't think they allowed you to put names that, like, fucked up the browser. This is crazy. Now you down. So my team would look a lot sexier if I had Brees, DJ Moore, and Nico Collins, but we'll, you know. We'll persevere. How do you print this year's draft guide like 2023? Uh, we are working on a an input for that. There's currently nothing available for you to be able to print the actual draft guide right now. But we made it interactive. Um, so actually, this is I think you guys can see this right now. So you'll have our rankings here. And basically, like if you're if you are in real live time and you hit select, you could hit Marcus drafted and that guy's going to disappear. So we tried to make it and build it out so that, you know, you're looking at a player or whatever, and he goes off the board. You can do this shit in real time as you're drafting. So hopefully that you wouldn't have to print out the actual draft guide itself. But here we are. Xavier worthy at four or five team vice City's just gone. Fuck it. He's, he's just crashing out right now. Jalen Waddle pick eight Christian Watson, 32, I'm fine with that. Listen, this is a tournament play. I'm trying to win some fucking cash right now, and this guy is going to act like a jerk hole. I'm all about it. Um, you know what? Let's go with some some spicy tea, some spicy tea Higgs. Usually between him and Amari, I usually split the pot there, or George Pickens. Um, but I have T steadily moving up the rankings. I've you know there's a lot of hype about Burrow's wrist injury, hand injury, whatever, of him not being able to throw the ball. He looked fucking phenomenal in the first preseason game. I'm not really worried about that fake fraud-ass injury anymore. All I needed was one little sp sprinkle of gameplay to see that that man can just hit hit that with a flick of the wrist. There is one more player really shooting up my rankings, but I hate to like sprinkle it on right now because 
in case anyone here is drafting and is also in the chat. I don't want them to steal him from me. Okay, there it was. He stole him from me. Rashi Rice has pretty much been my fourth, fifth round pick in like every draft over the last like three or four days. I'm just I'm just starting to get more and more on board with the fact that I don't think he's gonna get suspended, man. And at that point, he's he's jumped up from he jumped up from like my wide receiver thirty three or four or something up to uh like my twenty two. He 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 took a massive leap. Motherfucker should be in the Olympics. Now we're seeing a little wide receiver run, seeing a little tight end run. What do you want to do? Jacobs at 5'2 feels like a good value, given Marshawn Lloyd's injury. I'll put the board back up for y'all. Just still so much orange everywhere. It's like we had a Longhorns game. Speaking of, we're going to a Longhorns game in October. BG times snapback. We're holding a trivia tournament down at uh, University of Texas for the Texas-Georgia game. It's going to be an absolute fucking fiasco. So if any of y'all are down at Texas, if any of you guys go to the University of Texas or Georgia, we'll be dropping more deets soon on that. Well, I missed the I missed the ride on the big five tight ends, but I see a lot of sexy wide receivers. Actually, not a lot, but I have, I have two that I can uh, choose between that I would be super happy with either of them. And then they're, they're the two at the top of the ADP. So we have Christian Kirk and we have Terry McLaurin. So, you know, I, I made this point about Terry McLaurin in a video a few days ago. Uh, I think the video was titled Mid-Round Picks That Will Win Your Fantasy League This Year. And it wasn't necessarily anointing them the league winners, but it was kind of painting the picture of if this happens, this player could, you know, go a little bonkers this year. And I was saying, I don't understand why Terry can't be this year as DJ Moore. Because when I look at Jaden Daniels and his, his skill set, how he pairs with a player like Terry McLaurin, uh, it's it's quite magical. And this was before the first preseason game when we saw you know Jaden let it rip down the sideline to Deami Brown. I think a lot of that's going to happen with Terry McLaurin this year. And then the report came out today that you know they're looking for their wide receiver too. Now I think that probably got overblown. I think what they meant by that was like who's the the second outside wide receiver because we saw in preseason week one Jahan Dotson was playing almost exclusively in the slot. So I think they pro that probably got taken out of context, but I think they just meant like who was going to play outside opposite of Terry, which kind of surprised they didn't just they haven't just like bagged up Deami Brown and put him atop the depth chart there. But regardless, I'm not too worried about it. But yeah, I think the combination of if Jaden Daniels is good and is if his deep ball translates to the NFL level, like that's going to be huge for Terry because Terry's gotten absolute shit targets over the last four years or so, um, and he's still been able to put up you know a stack a year, a thousand yards year in and year out, despite horrendous QB play. So we've worked our way back. I feel, I feel relatively good with our wide receiver room after accidentally double tap in the running back position. So now we've given ourselves uh, a decent amount of flexibility where we could kind of go in on a quarterback. Yeah. I think Anthony Richardson probably would have been my only play there at the QB position. If I wanted to dive in, but I think I might go George Kittle if he's available here. I have Kittle ranked above Kyle Pitts straight up. Ain't no fucking question or doubt about it this year. Um, and then I, th I think Kittle's just like in his own tier of in his own tier of players, like amongst the guys on the board, like Deontay, Rome, Hollywood. They're all fine. And you know what? Maybe I should do. Eh, I'll see if he falls to me. Like Kittle, Kittle could be elite at his position. He could be top three. Where I just, I don't know that I see that for any other player on the board at their respective position. You know what I mean? Outside of QB, like obviously Stroud or Kyler, or any of those guys could do it. But where did uh, where did Kenneth Walker go? How early did he go? Kenneth Walker went at the five nine. All right, people finally wising up to, to K Dubs. Take K Dub stains. Are you down? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah, just to go back to the draft guide and just and just pluggy plug this a little bit. Um, if you're new to Underdog and you sign up using our code BDGE, um, you're gonna get the draft guide absolutely free access to the draft guide sent to you, where it's got all of our rankings, it's got all of our articles going up, must draft players, strategy for all the types of leagues, the fade list, the slept on tiebreaker charts. 
uh, week one preseason game by game recaps. Week two will be going up after these games are done. Um, so if you sign up on underdog with our code BDGE and you deposit 10 bucks or more, not only are you going to be able to draft with us, obviously on here, you'll get a deposit bonus up to like 250 bucks, depending on how much you put on, but you'll get the draft guide email to you free as well. So underdog fantasy link is down below. Yeah, get down. What else we got going on here? All right. Well, Jake Ferguson fell to me, and I probably would have liked to have drafted him if I didn't take Kittle, but we proceed. I kind of hope Najee falls to me here. Is that crazy? Is that the sickest words you've ever heard come out your mouth? Come on, fanboy. He's going with his, his first running back here for sure. Let's go. Oh, okay. Interesting. He took Warren before Najee. I'm taking Najee here. You guys know I've been on the Najee, uh, Najee train all summer, and I ain't stopping anytime soon. Even the video I put out today, I was talking about how in a podcast I listened to recently from The Athletic, one of the fucking co-hosts said that Najee's going to lead the league in um, rushing yards by over 200 yards. He's a fucking cone for saying that. But um, there, was a, there was a joint practice today between Pittsburgh and – I forget what team, but they said the first play of the joint practice, Najee took it to the crib for a 40-piece. Y'all feel me? What's going on in the chat? How we down? I'm sorry if I'm missing all your guys' super chats. I'm I'm, I'm locked in on the draft right now. Uh, full PPR, would you go Jettas, Bijan, Hall, or Amon Ra? Uh, I have Amon Ra ranked highest of those four in a full PPR. Zendaya shout out. She always deserves a shout out. It's fucking disrespectful of me to have gone eight full, seven full rounds without a without a big Z shout out. For show, for show. Are you down? Oh, I gotta get back on. Was Rome picked already? Yeah, he was, huh? So my plan, I was thinking about going. Um if Rome fell back to me here, where the hell did he even get picked? I don't know. I was thinking about stacking DJ Moore and Rome and then taking uh, Caleb as my QB, either one or two. It didn't really matter. I will say I've been taking a lot of Jordan Addison, but now that he's kind of banged up, I don't really love it. See, this, this is the reason why I made this video the other day where I don't have a lot of um, – what's the QB sitch? Cincy. All right, let's, let's, stack, uh, let's stack Burrow with Higgins. Like I was saying, I don't have any real exposure to Romeo Dobbs. I don't have any real exposure to players like in this range, really, except for I have an insane amount of Josh Palmer. But it's because I pick, I pick running backs here. Like the value of like you really want Romeo Dobbs over a Tony Pollard or a DeAndre Swift or a Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert just has 21 fucking touchdowns, and we want to take Romeo Dobbs over him. Like what on earth are we doing? See, right here, this is why. This is why I miss out because you always have some schmuck, some cone, some absolute fraud of the highest degree. It should be put on a should be put on four horses and then they should all run in different directions. Because one of these guys is going to take Romel Dobbs in the middle of a Raheem Moser Tony Pollard run. And it makes me sick. I feel like DK versus Moore is a dilemma. I get often what's your reason for Moore over him. Um, yeah, it's just it's just my belief in in Caleb Williams and, and my belief in the Chicago offense at this point. Make your camera smaller, by the way. We can't see your team. Oh, my bad. Can I move myself over there? How's that? Bang. Are you not worried about too many options in Houston's offense taking from Nico? Uh, so realistically, I think the way this is going to play out is Stroud's going to have a monster year and throw for like 46, 4,700 yards, and I think Tank and Nico will be the top two options there. I think Stefan Diggs will be fine, but I think he'll end up finishing around 800 yards. Um, I actually I think I'm going to move Tank over Diggs in my rankings, and then Nico's going to be my one. So I, st I think Nico will put up a another spectacular year where he'll have 1,308 to 10 touchdowns. Tank will be behind him at about 1,000 ish and then Diggs will be right below him so yeah the concern is you know the concern is there but I'm not I don't want to overblow it okay again see like I'm I'm not even though the build see this is why I was so pissed about taking Gibbs early on because you start three wide receivers so you do need to really pound that room pause but like now that the value of running backs here is so real 
Uh, let's go fucking Tajay. Let's go Tajay here. So now we have four running backs, and they're all phenomenal fantasy players. But now we're really light on the wide receiver room, which is not how you want to build a team on underdog realistically. But again, 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 the value, like this is why these are these are important to do because you start to understand the value pockets of players and you start to realize, okay, I've done like five of these drafts. I know that the running back value swings heavily once you get to rounds like eight, nine, ten. Like you're always going to want to take, you know, these high upside, young, explosive backs, Tajay Spears, even B-Rob, Javante Williams over Josh Palmer. Like what's Palmer's upside? I like him. PPR guy, he should have a nice floor. Like realistically, what is it, 65, maybe 900, six touchdowns in that range? Like, come on now. Come on, Lee. What are we down? I do it. I got to start hitting some wide receivers, though. I really do. Hmm. Do we go Sheed? Sheed's, Sheed's a good best ball pick. Go have some big games. There's a lot of people that really like him for a breakout year, but I just I just don't really see the only the only real difference in the situation is their new offensive coordinator. They'll run more play action and more motion there, which will open things up a little bit more. But at the end of the day, there's still Derek Carr. There's still the Saints offense. They're still behind a bad offensive line that probably won't really allow Derek Carr to open up the offense as much as he'd want to. So I don't I don't see the situation really changing enough to where like Shahid can like break break out. You know what I'm saying? Colin, he says, uh, big money draft tonight, full PPR, Chaser Sun God. I've got I've got Amon Ra over him. I just I, I just don't see a world where Amon Ra disappoints you. If if you if you want to go for the spicy ceiling, if you want to try to get I wouldn't even say cute because J- Chase is just a you know fucking savage regardless, but like um, I'm gonna take Amon Ra. Let me let me ask anybody in the chat, anyone in the chat, if you have owned Amon Ra, if you owned Amon Ra last year, was there anywhere in fantasy football that you would not have taken him? Like, there's not a single person that owned him last year that was disappointed by the way that he played last year, and I don't think any of them would go back and say I would swap him out for any pick. Obviously, outside of like you know C Mac 101, but. Amon Ra was about as consistent as they come and as, as much of a fucking dog as there is. Love the offense. Love the player. He's just goaded. You're yeah, your yeah. I wore my BDG to the I wore my BDG to the casino last week and I lost four hundred dollars. <laughs> Wrong. Uh well you didn't specify what type of gear you wore. Was it a hat? Was it a t shirt? Um, you should just know if you're wearing BDG merch, you're, 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 you're getting in trouble. Nick, do you think I use status affects Kittle? I don't know what's going to happen with there. My, I, I'm starting to lean towards I just staying with San Fran. I think he just played his cards perfectly. I think he, uh, told them this is what I'm worth. I think San Fran said, no, you're not. And he said, okay, I'm going to go prove it to you in the market. And then the Steelers came in the nine, uh, the Pats came in. Uh, everybody came in and said, yep, we're going to give you this 35 mil. And then I said, yep, so I am worth this. If you want to keep me, this is what you got to pay. And uh, and now they're paying the pipe piper. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, okay. We're bike, baby. Um, Do we want to grab a second quarterback? I don't hate that because these are – this is like the last of this tier that I think I'm still cool with, the Tua and Goff tier. And they're guys that I like to – you know what? I don't have any, like – Goff Gibbs stacks, I don't think. I don't typically take Gibbs in uh in underdog really, because it's half PPR. But Goff and, and two are like the bottom of that tier where I'm comfortable with those guys as my QB twos in these drafts. So we're gonna have to start we're gonna have to start really hitting some sleepers here. I got I got a bunch of sleepers though on on underdog that I I I'd be sleeping, you know. Hey, you down. I can't get over this guy's fucking name. Roundtable Sports Podcast. He must know someone that works there. They don't let that shit happen. Hmm. <laughs> 
In 2022, my league mate traded the Sun God for Allen Robinson in Dynasty. Oh, my God. He's been one of the sexiest Dynasty assets of the last, like, three years. That's got to hurt like a motherfucker. Jonathan says, Draft Guy Fuego, how you doing? I'm chilling, my man. This is a, I like this setup. I feel like in my zone. I can't. You know what's so weird? There's got to be a, set, a camera setup. You see how my my camera's, like, crooked? Like, my... It's like going down that way. I think it might just be my apartment or maybe how I hung those pictures. Uh, I'll stop yapping for a second. We're at the 12 6. I need some wide receiver help here for show. Who do we got all together? Two is still there. Eckler. Yeah, we need wide receivers bad. I, I have very little Darnell Mooney. I don't know if that's a mistake because I, I look around and I'm like, dude, I would rather have. If we're talking about clear wide receiver twos in their offenses, Michael Wilson is just as much as the two as Darnell Mooney is, and I think I prefer Michael Wilson being in his second year to Mooney being in his you know fifth year and three years removed from his breakout. Um, so I think one of the other lessons you got to learn when you're playing fantasy is like you can't just you can't just live by the ADP on these sites. Right. Like when you start to think about things from a common sense standpoint like that, where like Michael Wilson's going 40 spots before or after Darnell Mooney, but the situation is exactly the same. And one guy's younger, one guy's got more size, one guy's, uh, I think just fits better with the scheme. Like, don't overthink that shit. You know what I mean? Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the camera. So I think the iPhone or whatever software I'm using, like, it automatically, like, my phone right now is, like, the, this. And when I move it down, it just stays in the same frame. It's weird. Like, I think it has some auto reframe type of software in it. So even when I try to straighten it out, it doesn't even help me. It, like, straightens it to a point, and then it actually ruins it for me. I think my pictures, are, I think my whole apartment is actually crooked, and it's on a downslide. I think there's a good chance I roll off my bed tonight. Just down this way. Damn, I never even thought about that. Now you done fucked me up. All you did was ask me how I'm doing, and now you fucked me up. Put me in a blender. Goddamn, goddamn. And this is the other point. Michael Wilson has a hot girlfriend, and I didn't even mention that. We got a preseason game tonight. Any of y'all tell my picks today? I put a pick at the end of today's video. I took uh, Joe Milton over. I don't know if that's looking too hot right now. All right, we're deep into the 13th round. Do I still need wide receiver help? You know what's being like so fucking overplayed? Like all of the tight end narratives, even though Cole Komet's not here anymore. Uh, I'm going to take Schultz. I think he's the best player available on the board right now. Um, like everyone losing their minds over Gerald Everett playing some snaps with Chicago, like Cole Komet's a legitimately really good tight end and a good pass catcher and now has a really good quarterback. We're overthinking the fuck out of that one. I could tell you that. Uh, I've been buying the dip everywhere on Cole Komet. Um, but yeah, I got, I got some picks going for, for tonight's game, Pats and, and, uh, the Eagles. And, uh, you guys can actually track. All of my bets on Picket. Picket is a free app. Um, I think the desktop you might have to pay for, but they have a free app where you can follow me on there. I think it's my username at Nick Ercolano. Uh, and you will be able to see all of the bets that I make on Underdog, on any sports book, uh, throughout the entire summer, throughout the entire off season as well. So it's free to download. And when you actually get on Picket, like if you download, you, there's, there's the link down below. And it's got like our BDG at the end of it. I don't know if you put a code in or if that link will just take you there with our code. It doesn't matter. It's free still. But they will just send you anywhere from 3 to to $100 for no reason, just for joining the app. You don't got to put a credit card down. You don't got to deposit nothing. So just download the Picket app. Do yourselves a favor. Get some fucking free money. And you can track our bets throughout the entire season if you want to fade me. I'll be honest. The preseason bets are pretty tough, man. It's hard to get a read on, uh, on who's playing when, who's playing how much, and what they're down. 
All right. All right. Just one more. Team Vice City. Nothing out of pocket here. Okay. I was just absolutely out of pocket. What kind of shit is he doing right now? We'll go with Poppy. Poppy. His team. He has three QBs. No, no, no. Go back. Three quarterbacks. Three running backs. I got to say, what? And Dawson Knox is the only tight end? What is this guy doing? There's not even like a bit to be had here. He's not even doing a bit. There's nothing funny about this team. There's nothing. It's just bad. It's just it's just pure bad technique and fundamentals on drafting. And it makes me sick. It actually makes me sick. Hey, you down. Chief Star is getting a full half this weekend. Could be the place to put money. Really? Is that true? Yeah, that's true. I, Andy Reid don't really fuck around. Mm-mm. Just got pick it up with your code. Like the layout so far. Appreciate you, Laura. I downloaded the app and asked me for your code a few questions into signing up. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Dowling right now, goat. Yeah, y'all, you are the fucking goat. Tailed both Milton and Kenny. Yes, sir. Am I higher on downs after my interview? Uh, I mean, the problem was I interviewed him like three hours after. Uh, Eric's referring to the Colts beat reporter that I had on my channel a couple days ago. Um, maybe that was yesterday. I don't fucking know. All the summer days blend together at this point. And we were talking about Josh Downs being like a, a breakout candidate this offseason, but I interviewed him like two or three hours after Downs suffered the high ankle sprain. And you guys know I'm very, I'm very, very risk averse when it comes to drafting injured players. You know, it's it's like one of the easiest pieces of advice I can give to y'all um, is just don't don't draft injured players. Like injuries are going to find you throughout the fantasy season. Why are you going out of your way to find them? at the start of the season. It makes no, it make a no sense. Um, and Josh Downs with that timetable, it's like, uh, it's like it could be at the start of the season. The problem is if he's not 100% by like week one or week two and then he pushes it, the likelihood, and he pushes it and gets back on the field too early, the likelihood of him fucking it back up again gets, it skyrockets up. So I, unless I'm kind of, I'm kind of out on Downs unless it's like a 13th, 14th, 15th round pick. Um, unless we hear like really good news over and over again about how good he's been looking, but I, I I don't really see it happening. You know who I do love? See, now we're at the part where it's like, okay, objectively, let's look at wide receiver threes across the board, and that's my guy, fucking Andre Yoshivas. I've been scooping him up in the fifteenth round of like every underdog draft. I already have Joe Burrow, so now we have the double stack of Burrow, T. Higgins, and and Yoshi. See, like you could look at some of the other names and say, okay. Rashad Bateman, what is he? He's probably like the fourth target in a low of low volume passing offense. You have Demarcus Robinson, who's probably the wide receiver three. Although Jordan Whittington's making some noise out there in L.A., uh, Demarcus Robinson's the three out there in L.A. So you ask yourself, do I like the Rams passing offense more or since these? And you know you can go either way. I think there's an argument for both sides. But again, we're getting down to this part in the draft. You have Jalen Tolbert. He's probably the wide receiver three. Um, so you start to ask yourself, you know, these are all players that are the threes in their respective offenses. Tolbert, Yoshivas, Marcus Robinson. They're all pretty good offenses. They're all high volume passing offenses. Who do you like the most? Yoshivas is easily the most athletic. He's young. He's explosive. Uh, he had a quiet, good rookie year last year. So um, I've just been I've been gobbling his ass up left and right. Poise. Poise. Mm. Uh, Nick, I deposited my 10 on UD and used code BDG this morning and still haven't received the guide in my email. Um, I believe, oh shit, ah oh shit, ah oh shit, we got, okay, see, now we could just double tap. Me and Greg Dorch has been getting some hype too. Now nah, we're going to go, we didn't get, Ky- if we had Kyler as our other quarterback and we had Dorch and Michael Wilson, that stack would be unstoppable. This is what happens when we're deep into August, we're close to draft season. I'm out here pitching fucking Greg Dorch, Michael Wilson stacks. Like my life depends on it. That's a problem. That's a problem that needs to be addressed in therapy. And I don't have a therapist, which is why I'm going to keep it fucking coming at your face holes. Uh, still haven't received the guide in my email. What should I do? Okay. So for anyone that thinks they haven't received it yet, one, obviously always check your spam folder. Always check spam in the email. Two, if you did not receive it, but you signed up on underdog, 
The way it works is this. Underdog sends us a list of all of the emails of people that have signed up over the previous 24 hours each day at 3 p.m. Eastern time. We take that over the next 60 to 90 minutes, so somewhere between like 4 and 5 p.m. Eastern time. We upload that list and you get shot out email access. You'll get an email to it. All right. So um, so if you haven't gotten it today, then you can email us business at bdge.co. Business at bdge.co and JMO will hook you up with access. He'll make sure he'll confirm that you did it and then do it. Hey, it down. There goes Dorchy. Dorchy deserves respect. Y'all see if holy hell this is a long one. Um, damn, didn't know you were going live. Let me get a recap, bro, so I don't have to rewind. Been waiting for you to go live because I want to. I want to ask if y'all are doing the real dealer. Oh, are y'all doing the deal or no deal type games this year? Like week to week, we love y'all. Uh, fuck yeah, I think we're doing the deal or no deal. I'm I'm pretty hands off on on. Um, sorry, I'll get back to that your question right after I pick here. Okay, so now we have four running backs. We probably need a fifth one. I feel good about our quarterbacks. I feel good about our tight ends. I feel relatively good about our wide receivers, despite not having a bunch. Uh, my favorite pick right now is probably Jordan Mason. I don't hate Justice Hill. Um, we're going to Jordan Mason because right now he seems to be the backup for Christian McCaffrey. And Christian McCaffrey, who is supposedly almost back to speed, is still dealing with a calf strain, and that could end up lingering. We don't we don't know what will happen there. It gives him a higher re-injury risk Uh percentage going into the season so jordan mason if he's a two will get a lot of run in san fran but regardless i think he'll get a little bit of a breather room because elijah mitchell's been out pretty much all summer with an injury um can i give you a recap of what all 18 rounds no i can't really do that unfortunately we're doing a mock draft right or not a mock draft we're doing a a live fantasy football draft i will be doing this pretty much every single night Maybe not every single night. I don't want to promise that. But I'm going to do this as many open nights as I possibly have from now until the opening of kickoff. So if you're new here, <clears throat> subscribe to uh, the – I think I'm live on all three channels right now. I don't even know. I think I'm live on Fantasy, on Dynasty, on Trivia. I'm bringing in all the fucking BDG audiences at once. We're like a superpower. We're like, you know, the new movie Twister where it's got two? We got fucking three of them right now. We're Twisters with a fucking Z at the end of it, all right? We're throwing zingers out. But I'm going to be going live all the time. So subscribe. And more importantly, turn notifications on. So around six, seven o'clock when I go live, it'll it'll ring you phony. We'll grab Justice Hill. I think he's the two behind. Unless do we want to grab another position here? Do we go with Sammy Slings? Do we take Sam Darnold just out of fucking for the aura? No, nah, I think we need help. Uh, actually, I think we might need more help at wide receiver. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do that. Oh, Jordan. Yeah, we're gonna grab Jordan. Not you. Whittington's this rookie who's getting hype, similar to the hype that Puka got last year. Obviously, his path to playtime is way more difficult than Puka's was, but Whittington's getting some insane fucking hype out there. And I'm a dumbass. Like, I should have took Stafford if I was going to grab Whittington. And you, you know what's insane about this? Like, the most excited I've gotten on this entire stream was a stack of Michael Wilson and Greg Dortch, a stack of Demarcus Robinson and Jordan Whittington. And then a stack of Andre Yoshivash and fucking Joe Burrow. What's wrong with me? What are we down? Um, but for deal or no deal, I think so. Uh, what I was going to say before is that I'm I'm pretty hands off with like the scheduling on all of our trivia content at this point. JMO and Sexy and those guys are really like doing their thing. I'm kind of zoned in on fantasy content and just the football season in general. I, I I believe we're doing deal or no deal again, though. I don't I don't see a reason why we wouldn't. I hope so. Deal or no deal is fucking easy. I just sit on a couch. I fucking pick the worst cases every time. I end up getting a root for Greg Dortch every damn time. Where's my team at, though? Where the fuck did my team go? Where's the puppy three? All right, thank God. I only entered one of them, so that works. All right, so here's the final team on the right side. I think you guys can see that, right? Let me move my ass over to the middle. So... We got Joe Burrow and Jared Goff as their QBs. As I said, um, Jared Goff is like the last tier of quarterbacks that I'd be comfortable starting uh, in a one quarterback league. So you have like the Goff, you have Tua, you got T Law, you got Kayla Williams, like those guys. At running back, we got Brees, we got Jameer Gibbs, Najee Harris, Tajay Spears, and Jordan Mason. And at wide receiver, because 
we ended up kind of fading the position early on. And you do start three wide receivers, which is why I drafted so many. So some of you guys might be new to underdog. Some, some of you guys might be getting introduced to it for the first time. Basically, you draft this big-ass team with 18 players on the roster. And the software, underdog, automatically starts the best quarterback the two best running backs, the three best wide receivers, the best tight end, and then whatever's left over, the best flex play. So you draft a large team, and you're only starting a few players each week. You don't choose it, though. It automatically does the best ones for you. But since you start three wide receivers and a flex, like you have to really get a lot of high-quality options because if if these guys on the bottom here, like these three guys, don't end up really playing at all this year, you're getting a bunch of fucking zeros because you got to remember there are obviously bye weeks. There are injuries that happen. There are guys that just bust, like – So you got to kind of think strategically and think uniquely because there are so many uh, teams entering the Puppy 3. 225,000 entrants. They just put this live this morning. I guarantee this is going to be full by like like 48, 96 hours. Like by the end of this weekend, it's insane. Um, This is the prize breakdown. Hundo K to first, 75 to second, 50K to third, 25 to fourth. But yeah, dude, underdog's fun as fuck. You just you you start to get addicted to these drafts. As you can see, all these on the left side are drafts I've already done before. We'd be ripping them in the Discord and and whatnot all the time. So if you're new, join the Discord and just fucking join everything. Every website you go on, just try to enter in the code BDG and see if it works. It'll work on underdog. Again, you'll get our draft guide for free. You'll get a deposit bonus on here. You'll get a free square for week one of Lamar Jackson 0.5 passing yards. We got a whole gang of shit. Enter the code BDGE on picket. I eat down. You'll be able to track my bets. You'll get anywhere up to $100 for free. Uh, Go get the draft guy. Go get, I don't fucking know. What are we doing? Let's go back to full screen. How are we doing out here? What's going on in the chat? What do you think about Simmons to Atlanta? I Our secondary got spicy real quick. Justin Simmons, Jesse Bates, AJ Terrell. If only I was about to say, if only we had a pass rush. Like, I think the signing of Matt Judon was sexy. I'm just so, still a little bit worried. I don't think you guys understand how bad our pass rush has been over the last five years. This one man cannot fill the void that's in our heart. So unless Matthew Judon has a TJ Watt type season, I still think we're going to struggle. Uh, getting to the quarterback, which in turn is obviously hurt hurting the secondary. That's right. Whittington was a dog at Texas. Mitchell Worthy, Sanders, and Brooks just overshadowed. Yeah, I mean, eventually, though, you got to do your thing. And he, he played pretty well. He put up, like, decent numbers, uh, given the fact that he was behind – I mean, at this point, what is that? Mitchell's a second rounder. Brooks is a second rounder. Worthy was a first rounder. Sanders was a fourth rounder, I believe. Yeah, so you're talking about three day one, day two picks. So, yeah, it's not easy. You really thought this shit was going to hit a meal? You really thought I was going to fall for this? What kind of fucking cone do I look like? Are you trying to move off Devontae Adams and Dynasty? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not opposed to it. The, the, the problem is there's just not really a ceiling to be had, I don't think, for him without a quarterback there. I like Minshew, but I just think it's going to be a slow offense. I think there will be games where he gets, you know, fucking 12 targets, but I, I don't really see him, you know, topping 1,200-ish yards and, like, 90 catches or anything like that, which is good if you're in a full PPR league and you just kind of want to ride it out. But I think if you can get like a back end first for him right now, I'm I'm not opposed to it. Atlanta defense looks pretty fucking. See, this is the thing. We look like on paper, we look great everywhere. We just it, it's like when you don't have the depth. Like depth matters in the NFL, man. Like if you don't have, it, it's cool that we got a lot of star players on defense now, but our defense isn't great. You know, that's the thing. Like, Judon is great. Simmons is great. Bates is actually a game changer. Terrell Terrell can lock dudes down. But there's still the problem with, like, if one domino falls, the rest of the goddamn game board tips over. You know what I mean? Like, any any real good team, you know, if you're the Bengals, you've experienced that over the recent years. Like, this shit happens where on paper everything looks good if everything goes right. So I'm just, like, the most pessimistic motherfucker of all time. So whatever, whatever. 
Would you have preferred they drafted Dallas over Penix? Uh, I mean, that's so hard to say. I, I, it feels just stupid to even have an opinion. At the time, I, I, I wanted um, Dallas Turner or I wanted um, – why the fuck can't I think? Who, who's the uh, interior, the D-tackle from Texas? Byron Jones. I actually still probably would have preferred Byron Jones because all we had was Grady Jarrett on the interior, and he's coming off a torn ACL. Um, so probably – Based on the way that our team is as like structure, we're in win now mode, you know. And I like Penix; I think he's going to be good. But like, if we're going to fucking send it, send it. Which Washington receiver going to benefit the most and have the biggest year thanks to the goat JD five? Uh, easily. I mean Terry, of course. My first BET stream. Wish W A allowed underdog. Yeah, I'm sorry for all the all y'all that can't actually draft on underdog. It's unfortunate. I don't even know what my life would be like if I couldn't draft an underdog. <clears throat> Byron Murphy, yep, that's it. That's who I wanted. Whew. Need more live streams. Yeah, I'm gonna uh like I said, I'm I'm gonna be hopping on and doing this pretty much again, I'm not gonna say nightly, but I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot for at least like four nights a week going forward until the season actually kicks off. So, again, subscribe to any of the channel that you're on right now. Uh, hit the notification bell, all that good shit, and then um, and then I'll be back. So, whatever. Join me then. Don't join me then. Become my enemy. Become a cone. It all don't matter to me. You see that? That's you right there. You're a cone. All right, I'm dipping off. Thank you guys for hanging out. Code BDG everywhere. Smoochies.